uh, welcome to Health Check, your weekly live medical show for all matters health. My name is Vicious Watari. Now, today we're going to have a very interesting conversation. We're going to be talking about ADHD. And in full, that is uh, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Yes. That's right. That's what we'll be having a conversation on today. And uh, some of the symptoms that maybe some of you may have heard about, they include impulsiveness, difficulty on focusing on a task, poor planning, frequent mood swings, among others. But to help us with that conversation, we have amazing Kellen with us. And of course, we also have Maureen. I'm so glad to have you guys. We've had such a nice chit chat before the show so i know that this show is just going to give people so much information that they need mm -hmm. now kellen is an author we have her book right here <laughs> and we'll be talking more on what the book contains but she will be sharing her story on adhd her experience with it and also telling us about you know the community and uh, the support group that she also has and also just to open our eyes to understanding that this is something that actually affects many people even in our country as at now we also have the amazing maureen who is a counseling psychologist and she's very passionate about matters of mental health so you can definitely begin to send in your questions through our whatsapp line which is 0708 Two, three. I know you guys have a lot of questions on this, so you can begin to send them and we'll be glad to answer them. You can also share this link with a friend, with a parent, with anyone you feel may benefit from the conversation of the day today. And also, guys, let me just tell you about our FOH campaign that is currently running right now, and that is also called Rafikim. So you must have heard of it, 100 for 1. And what this means is that when you contribute 100 shillings, we are able to reach one soul with the message of Christ. You can contribute more as the Lord has blessed you. But this is just to help us to make sure that we are spreading the word of God and calling more people into salvation. So you can definitely send in your contributions to our cable number, which is 933 933. The account FOH. You can definitely do that and we'll be glad. God is just going to bless you. So let me get to our conversation. Hello, girls. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hello. So I love the color coordination to start with. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Looks like we had a memo. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Seems, yeah. 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 Mm. Okay, let's start with you, Bori. Please give us a brief introduction. So good evening. Mm. My name is Maureen Pino. I'm a clinical psychologist. Um, just remaining with a few things to graduate with a clinical psychology. But I'm also, uh, of course, as you introduced, I'm a counseling psychologist. Uh, I work at Lifebridge Psychiatric Hospital. We are based at Mirema at Roisambu. That's where I see my clients, both inpatient and outpatient. And the journey for mental health has been so beautiful. Uh, the facility has helped me grow yeah. as a person and also I've achieved my goals as a person as well. So I'm grateful for this opportunity as well to sit here and also spread this beautiful message of mental health yeah. and how to impact one another with it. Thank you. I used to say I remember some time back and I'm like, let's bridge. I feel like I saw it mm -hmm. somewhere. Yes. <laughs> welcome. Thank, Thank you so time. much. All right. Let's go to Kelly. Yeah. You wear many hats. Help me. <laughs> Tell us about all those hats. <laughs> okay, so uh, my name is Kellen Waitera. I am a project manager by profession and by passion, an enthusiastic mental health uh, advocate. I also like saying that uh, I'm an expert in mental health by lived experience by virtue of my journey with ADHD and having walked a long journey in mental health uh, before I ever came to know that I have ADHD. I am also a certified coach. I am also an author and a speaker. What else? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the Lord. <laughs> yes. That's, that's yes. amazing. Yes. Thank you. Many people are just waiting to hear your story. But maybe let's just get the facts right, just to let people understand what ADHD is. Maybe Maureen, you can take that. What is ADHD? 
Wow, so maybe a brief introduction of it, ADHD. Uh, we say it's a neurodevelopmental disorder. This means it is diagnosed mostly from the developmental stages as a child. And maybe some people it might be missed, but even as they develop, maybe as an adult, it can be diagnosed. But remember, the formation is normally at childhood. Um, basically, as you've had ADHD, it is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, meaning this child or this person will have uh, the inattentive aspect where this person is not able to focus on tasks, finish on assignments, uh, they are unable to concentrate on a conversation because the inattentiveness is there. For the hyperactivity is the aspect where they also have the impulsivity, where this person is all over the place. They are up and about, their seat in class will never be filled, uh, they are the first one to shout out answers. We call them the always going person. They are always on the move. So meaning this disorder, it has two aspects. It has two subtitles, but also there is the combined aspect. So there is the inattentive aspect and the hyperactive aspect, and now the combined with the two, okay? And looking at it, uh, it is quite, let me say it's, mental health is quite new in Africa. Yeah. So it's when people are hearing of these terms. Yeah. And so like we had the chit chat, in the western or even you'll find it in the country people are just misusing the word i have <laughs> adhd just like people wake up and say i have depression yeah. but they don't know what exactly yeah. is this mm -hmm. so meaning we don't just wake up and say we have adhd mm -hmm. there's a criteria we follow that helps one to identify what exactly is this person talking about and so using the this 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 year dsm5 sorry tr the revised version and the icd10 mm -hmm. for those who have moved to 11 yeah you get to see there's a criteria that has already been arranged right. to say that this person either has the inattentive aspect mm -hmm. or the hyperactive aspect or it's a combined type mm. okay yeah so with that i think we can now be able to look into the disorder mm -hmm. yes wow yeah. amazing amazing yes. and maybe we can go to kellen uh -huh. you have such a beautiful story you told me a little bit about it but i think our viewers also want to hear mm -hmm. how did you even realize mm -hmm. that this is something that i needed to get a diagnosis on um i i realized that adhd is something that okay at that time i did not even know that it is adhd i was just seeing symptoms that were so outstanding right. it's only later that i would know mm -hmm. that all those symptoms put together are called adhd yeah but before i ever got to know there was a lot of this dysfunction in my life and growing up i have kept asking myself that question of what could be wrong with me yeah you know because i was so different from other children mm -hmm. you see like uh in primary school I would find that other, other students are able to hand in their assignments on time, yeah. but I was somehow always last minute, you know? <laughs> yeah. During, during, during classes when, when the teacher would say, read ahead of the teacher, I was never able to read ahead of the teacher, mm. you know? Mm. And I was wondering, how is it so easy for the others and it's not easy for me, you know? Mm -hmm. Things like, uh, I, I so heavily dependent on depended on structure until today mm -hmm. i still heavily depend on structure yeah so you see primary school and secondary school there's a bell that tells you what you need to do but by the time i was getting to campus where now there's no structure i i, I struggled so much to even appear for class mm. and i was wondering i want to go for that class so bad how is it not coming easily for me yeah. like it is coming for the others you mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. something else that i was noticing is that i would feel my emotions so strongly mm -hmm. you know like when 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 let's say somebody was going through uh, something tough mm -hmm. i was able to relate to them so deeply more than maybe the average person mm -hmm. and 
easily other people's stress would would flow over to to my side you know yeah. and sometimes i would ask myself like how am i not being able to overcome this quickly like the mm -hmm. others like why am i carrying the burden so heavily that has a good side to it because it makes me very empathetic but also on the other side it is very exhausting mm. you know mm -hmm. so i kept asking myself what could be wrong with me now uh finishing primary school yeah. now also sorry <laughs> mm -hmm. now in high school i was also experiencing a lot of mental health struggle because of uh a, maybe adolescence and all the hormones that comes with it mm -hmm. plus i had already realized that i'm not very much i'm, I'm a little different from the other students so i was feeling isolated mm -hmm. and depressive symptoms were were checking in you know right. and it took the intervention of my 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 teachers to realize that this child something is is really wrong with them because i was always crying my eyes were red and swollen all the mm -hmm. time i was sleeping in class like 24 7. <laughs> <laughs> you know we yeah. laugh about it right now but at that time i was like what could be wrong with me you know yeah. so i was reading for exams the night before the exam a whole term of work Mm. I was never able to do it like the others, like they usually read every day, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it was very confusing. And now coming after after uh, primary and secondary school and now going into campus, yeah. remember my teacher who had introduced me to guidance and counseling? That's the only way that I survived high school. So going mm -hmm. into campus, I continued going for therapy. Yeah. So no matter how much I went for therapy, I would go for a session and a, a, a period of therapy would last, like, let's say how, how long? Mm, two to three weeks, you see? Mm -hmm. And now I am good. But in the next, like, after, after three months again, I'm down a dark pit, such a dark hole that I have to check back into therapy. And I did ask myself, what? it's all going away yeah. what what is this you know how is it that i am not recovering how is it that i'm mm -hmm. i have to be in therapy and between until today mm -hmm. i have to be in therapy you know mm -hmm. it has taken a lot of accepting myself mm -hmm. that there's a side of me that is quite vulnerable mm -hmm. or or a little different from the others yeah. to accept that that part so now after campus Coming into the corporate world, yeah. that is when ADHD started messing me up a mm -hmm. good one. Mm -hmm. When I look for jobs and because they can see I'm full of energy, I am passionate, <laughs> whatever yeah. I touch and I like it, I do it like mm -hmm. with all of my heart, you know. Yeah. So they, they would fall in love with my, my enthusiasm and, and my passion for it and also mm -hmm. You see, when you're passionate about something, you get good at it. Yeah. So they were not hiring me for mercy that, oh, let's just hire you because you don't have a job. It's because I was actually good at what they were hiring me for. But guess what? I would lose those jobs. Hmm. You know, like, why? Why am I losing jobs? Why, why am I not being able to, to progress? Yeah. And, and, and you, you find that my, my peers are in their first job in the second job mm -hmm. they started getting promotions but me my job is job hopping job hopping is the job you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we can laugh mm -hmm. about it right now because i've come to accept myself yes. but at that time it was really it can be very confusing you yeah. know now coming to the relationship side of it uh shortly after campus mm -hmm. i got married as evidenced <laughs> congrats <laughs> <laughs> to, to my husband yeah. whom i love so much mm -hmm. and i realized that there are aspects of our relationship there were strains in our relationship that we were exper uh, experiencing yeah that were not conventional or like right. they were not being easily solved by sitting with a counselor or like the way you can visit your past and tell them mm -hmm. she's doing she's doing yeah. or he's doing he's doing how do we help I queen a sidika, mm -hmm. and I was wondering why, you know. Now, I made the decision to seek a diagnosis or to dig deeper into my mental health when I lost one, my marriage. Oof. Yes, literally. It was so serious that we separated. 
And this is something that I was 100% sure. Beatrice, I know you love the Lord. And you know that before we get to oh, yeah. marry somebody, you have prayed, you have dreamt, you have, oh. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Tell me about it. You have confirmation <laughs> from here to Meru, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, how could it be possible? Oh. God has never told me something mm -hmm. and it it didn't, yani it proved wrong. You know, he yeah. has never contradicted himself. Mm -hmm. How is it that he, he confirmed to me so much that this is the man whom I should get married to, and now we are not even together? Mm. Higher. That's number one. Number two, shortly before that, I had just gotten my dream job. Like, after job hopping, all that, I had finally landed that job that everybody wants, you know. Mm -hmm. That job that promises you heaven. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I have wanted to do this all my life, you yes. know. Because I love charity work. I love mm -hmm. humanitarian work. I love working with people directly, imp impacting people's lives directly, you know. Yeah. I guess that's why also I'm very passionate about mental health advocacy. Mm -hmm. Because it touches people's lives directly, you mm -hmm. know. And the company was was good. It was paying well. It had all these benefits and everything. It was mm -hmm. project management. Wow. So I was like, it ticks all the boxes. Lord, thank you, finally. Mm -hmm. Then my boss calls me one day after so many struggles with my executive function, and I'll explain that sometime. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, sometime mm. Executive functions, oh, okay, or maybe the time is now. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> you see, with ADHD, uh -huh. um, you struggle with, uh, okay, let me start here. Mm -hmm. With ADHD, your brain has a deficiency of a very important chemical called dopamine right. and also some little deficiency of serotonin, mm -hmm. which are the hormones that help somebody to feel a reward for what you're doing yeah you know mm -hmm. it and and you see when you feel a reward for what you're doing you get motivated to do it yes. you see now when you don't have the hormone that is supposed to motivate you to do mm -hmm. uh, you first and foremost really struggle to find motivation for tasks that other people find so easy mm. that's where you'll find for somebody like me I can wake up one day and I clean the house upside down. The next day, I can barely get out of bed. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, when I compare the person Kellen was yesterday and whom she is today, mm. most likely yesterday when you saw me cleaning the house upside down, there is something that happened that, that made me feel satisfied. It, it, it stimulated my brain and my brain produced dopamine, mm -hmm. which is now giving me the motivation to do the things that I'm supposed to yeah. do. You see? Mm -hmm. So you struggle. Uh, dopamine is uh, uh, responsible for executive functions in the brain and the executive functions are number one, memory. Mm -hmm. So you will find that somebody who has ADHD, we struggle with short, short memory mm -hmm. or we remember the things that excite us. Mm -hmm. And then the mm. other things that don't excite us, in spite of the fact that they are important, yeah. they yeah. just keep our minds. You see, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. memory number one. Number two, organization. Mm -hmm. That's why you'll hear people say that people who have ADHD are so messy. Mm -hmm. And by the way, they want to be in, a, in an organized space because yeah. in an organized space, their mind is also organized. Mm. But... They, they, they can't help it, you see. Mm -hmm. They will drop that thing there they just need somebody around them who understands them and maybe creates for them a structure that will make it easier for them yeah. to stay organized. That's uh, memory, organization, prioritization. Mm. Now you see that is where to look Sana with my boss. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. um, you find that he would uh -huh. give me tasks. Mm. From those tasks, either it's two things. Yeah. I either sit and feel so overwhelmed by the list of tasks or I pick the one that I love the most. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then he'll come tomorrow and ask me, why didn't you do this? And I'll tell him, sir, I'm working on that, but I did this. Mm -hmm. Then he'll ask me, what made you think that that which you did was more important that. than that other mm -hmm. one? You see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's without, a tough one. Yes, without <laughs> understanding how do you answer that. And I did not know that at yeah. that time I have ADHD. So mm -hmm. let me complete on the mm -hmm. on the executive functions. Memory, organization, 
prioritization um task initiation hiyo mm -hmm. ku feel overwhelmed when when you have a lot of you see somebody that has adhd ni mwenye when they have a load of clothes za kufua badala ya afue anaenda analala it is so overwhelming mm -hmm. to think that I'll start <laughs> on that laundry yeah. that Anaziacha mm -hmm. You see, task yes. initiation uh -huh. and many more. You see, and many more executive functions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we struggle with those things. And now that affected my performance at work. Mm -hmm. And I was not being able to explain to my boss. So one day he called me and asked me uh, about my memory and told me, Kellen, yesterday I told you to do this and this. And genuinely, Beatrice, I had just forgotten. Yani, I had, I was like, oh my God, how did that escape my mind? Mm -hmm. So I was just genuine. I told him that, I'm sorry, that escaped my mind. Just give me, give me a minute. I, I get it done right now, you know, mm -hmm. before again, I forget. You see, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was not given another chance. Oh. I was told how many things, Kellen, have escaped your mind and how many more will yeah. escape your mind mm -hmm. that stung so deep and i did not see tena after that mm -hmm. and as you would guess it i lost my dream job mm. after that let me tell you beatrice i looked for maureen like a coin like yeah. can you just finally tell me what is this because I'm yeah. done. I'm done being messed up. I am marriageless. I am jobless. I'm businessless. My life, like, where, where am I headed? You know, mm. I've been in this mental health journey for such a long time. You see, all the way from high school. Yeah. But what could it be? And that is when I finally got diagnosed with, mm. with ADHD. And it was wow. such a relief mm -hmm. because finally I had an answer to so many questions. It was like a puzzle that has finally whew, mm -hmm. fit in. Yeah. Yes. Wow. That that was so, I don't even know intense. how to. It was intense. It was intense. And it was nice intense. It, it was very intense. And I love that, you know, you invited her because, mm. you know, this makes it even easier. <laughs> thank <you. laughs> but thank you so much for being brave mm -hmm. and just the courage to share your story because I feel like so many people have probably looked at themselves and thought there's something wrong with me mm. and I don't know what it is, mm. but maybe it's just me. And they've decided to just willow in self-pity, depression, addictions, which we'll mention mm. later on. But you being brave to come out and talk about this, it reminds someone that, they are not alone. Yeah. I mean, this is something that is actually happening. And um, maybe Maureen, we can open our eyes to understanding how does the diagnosis look like? We can use her example or anyone else's, but how do you diagnose ADHD? Okay. So thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. And thanks for telling us that yeah. beautiful journey mm -hmm. that you've gone through. Mm -hmm. And at least now you got a response. Yeah. So maybe looking at it, yeah. As you hear, she kept looking for answers. So most of the time, mm -hmm. or sometimes, you find people may land into other diagnoses. Okay. There might be other co-occurring disorders. Co-occurring means despite having ADHD, mm -hmm. there might be something else that is showing or symptoms of something else. Yeah. And uh, or a differential of you're thinking maybe it's not ADHD, it would be like specific learning disorders mm -hmm. or you might now be thinking of is it uh, opposition defiant disorder or is it is this person struggling with anxiety mm -hmm. or depression you know so there is all that uh, wandering around yeah. but when it comes to ADHD like I said it has two subtypes Right. You know, mm -hmm. and now the third one is where it's combined. Mm -hmm. So meaning when you go to the diagnostic manual, uh, statistical manual, the DSM-5, you find the criteria they have set aside. It is specifically talking about these symptoms in the inattentive. Mm -hmm. They say you must get this for a child. They have mm -hmm. to be six of those all those symptoms that they will they are listed there mm -hmm. and they have to have occurred within a six months period okay. you know not that today just because they are inattentive maybe they are unable to perform tasks and then you just think it's adhd it has to be consistent for those six months or and then for the adults 
it has to be only five symptoms, not all the symptoms that are listed mm -hmm. there. So you find for both in inattentive and hyperactive hyperactivity. So you'll find for the inact in, in the inact inattentive, you'll find like what she's saying, they are unable to perform the, the tasks they are given. Mm -hmm. It becomes a hard time for them to complete the task. Remember what she was talking about, the executive fun functions. Yeah. Organization becomes a problem. They are unable to organize their work. Mm -hmm. They don't meet deadlines even at work. Like they are given assignments, you find they will struggle even to give in. Like a child, they will even struggle to sit down and do their homework mm -hmm. because of the inattentive aspect. They are unable to like communication becomes a problem because they are unable to have that um, concentration to sit down and listen mm. and understand what the other person is going through. So you find when they have these symptoms mm -hmm. of the inattentive and when they meet the criteria that they have more six symptoms and then they might be for six months consecuti consecutively. Mm -hmm then they would, we would say they have inattentive aspect. For the hyperactivity, like she was saying, this child is up now and about. Yeah. Unlike the inattentive one, this one now is more the hyper person. You will find them uh, in class, they will never have a seat. You will find them, they are there, they are here. The teacher is trying to control them. Actually, in one of the clinics I interned, mm -hmm. I remember a mother coming with a stick in her handbag because this child can barely sit there Ooh. and so to control this child she has to carry a cane so that oh. she can keep caning the child oh. so that this child can concentrate and sit on one spot mm -hmm. until now she understood what the child was going through and now yeah. she was trained on how better to go about it mm -hmm. so you find this is always the child is always up and about yeah. you'll find when it comes to the, the impulsivity part you're trying to talk, they're shouting their answers, mm -hmm. even prior to asking them. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll burst out, they'll want to just do things in a hyperactive manner. Yeah. So when you find they are meeting this criteria, and for the combined type, mm -hmm. you'll find both the in inattentive and the hyperactivity mm -hmm. symptoms merging, um. you know? So they have to be consistently there yeah. so that you can say they have the combined. Mm -hmm. But now for the inattentive, if they are missing the hyperactive, mm -hmm. the hyperactivity aspect, then we only stick with the inattentive mm -hmm. diagnosis. If they are in their hyperactivity the symptoms and they have no inattentive symptoms, then you stick with the hyperactivity activity symptoms okay. so you go through that's why you have to see a psychologist yeah. or the psychiatrist so that they're able to rule it out for you because yeah. you can just see one aspect of the symptoms she's talking about then you're rushing yeah. to say she has adhd mm. or she has this disorder right. so and as i said okay. some of these other disorders they might present almost the same mm. or you might see there is some connectivity because most people also who have adhd yeah. they they also struggle with specific learning disorders. Okay. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. That's very well detailed. Yes. So we'll be taking a very short break, but once we get back, there's still a lot we need to talk about. And also to just take in some of the questions that you guys have regarding this topic. Thank you so much for staying for still being with us on this conversation. So to Tazamaki, no go to, but we'll be back shortly. Please don't go far. Hope TV is where you look and live with an excellent selection of the best Christian programming consisting of local and international content of inspirational stories, talk shows, Bible commentary, youth, health shows, children entertainment, contemporary gospel music, extended times of worship, live broadcast, news, movies, drama, Christian ministry programs and so much more. Hope TV is another quality service from Christ is the Answer Ministries with over 45% of authentic and credible local content every week. Hope TV is a sister station to Hope FM, Kenya's leading Christian radio station with footprints across the country. Tune in to Hope TV, where you look and live. In order to keep hope alive in the airwaves, Hope Media has a couple of initiatives. Friends of Hope. 
Friends of Hope is you and I forming a team of well-wishers and volunteers who give in cash and kind to support in spreading the gospel at Hope Media. Currently, Hope Media is running a campaign under Friends of Hope dubbed 100 for 1. Through the campaign, Hope Media is asking Hope FM and Hope TV listeners and viewers to give just 100 shillings in order to reach one more soul with the message of hope and the gospel. Engage with us on our social media platforms at Hope FM Live and at Hope TV Kenya. Kua Rafikim So Leo. Welcome back. Welcome back. We are having an amazing conversation on ADHD and with me is Kellen and Maureen. The conversation has really gotten, you know, to a heated up place, I would say, mm -hmm. because we're just unfolding all these things and just making people understand all about ADHD and what they shouldn't leave out. Mm -hmm. But now, um, you know, in, before we went for the break, um, Kellen, you told us a little, actually a lot about the challenges you faced mm -hmm. and how how you even realized and recognized that this is something that I need to seek some professional help. So I would love you to take us through now the treatment. Okay. How was it? And how did you begin to see the light? Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks for asking that because I was coming from a very messed up place. Yes. <laughs> and to see me like that, mm -hmm. like this today is yeah. a miracle in itself. That's true. And the diagnosis has played a big part. Mm. Of course, of course, God really did help me a lot to accept myself mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and the diagnosis. Yeah. And the diagnosis itself has also brought a lot of uh, understanding, right. a, lot mm -hmm. of, a, a lot of self-awareness. Mm -hmm. And with self-awareness, you know, they say knowledge is power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is power in that you realize that you, you no longer have to mask. And that is, that is something I would want to talk about because in, in, in ADHD, mm -hmm. you find that the reason why most adults will not be uh, easily, you cannot easily know that somebody has ADHD mm -hmm. unless they hear like a conversation like this and realize that all those symptoms, like I am just like that girl speaking, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> is because they have learned, throughout their lives, they've learned to mask it. You've learned at work to pretend or to to just put on a, yeah. a face that, mm -hmm. you know, hide your struggles. Mm -hmm. And hiding struggles does not solve it. Mm -hmm. So it's you brave yourself to work and then at home you go and crash and cry your pillow. Yeah. You, you know, you wet your pillow through the night, you know, mm -hmm. wondering what's wrong with me. And I love what Maureen mentioned about comorbid uh, or co-occurring um, disorders. Uh, disorders because that masking is what eventually makes this person become depressed. Right. They're trying to fit in in a world that is not quote-unquote built for them mm. because people who have ADHD and akin autism and learning disabilities, we call them neurodivergence. Mm -hmm. I am neurodivergent, meaning that the way my brain is structured is not conventional. Yeah. Those people that are not neurodivergent are called neurotypical because mm -hmm. their brain is typical. It, mm -hmm. is, it has everything that it needs to function. Yeah. You see? Mm -hmm. So they are, a neurodivergent is trying twice as hard every day to do what a neurotypical mm -hmm. does, is able to do. Yes, does in a, in, in a, in a, in a, in a snap over, mm -hmm. over finger. You see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, that way, after a lot of masking, they are so depressed and tired. Mm. They are so anxious to even face people. Now they have anxiety disorder. They have yeah. depression, mm. you know, and all those things. So after accepting myself and after the diagnosis, number one, I was given medication, mm -hmm. which is quite costly but worth it, yeah. you know. Plus, I also uh, uh, had to do a lot of research, a lot of research. And it is from it that the book was actually born because mm -hmm. I came to realize how, how much of things that I did not know, that I wish I had known earlier, you know. Yeah. Because these conditions, the earlier they are detected, the, the better. better. Sure. That's true. Every single day when, I, uh, when I'm receiving uh, feedback from people or the people who reach out to me, I, I usually hope or I usually wish that more of the people who are reaching out, uh, who are reaching out to me 
are not people of my age. Mm. Well, of course, when they come, I embrace them and like we're in this together. But I wish more parents would come to me for their children. Mm. Because the earlier it is detected, the yeah. better. Mm -hmm. And you may not even know that it is ADHD. Because remember, my teacher was able to see that I have a problem even before I knew that it is ADHD. Mm. Mm. When you see your child has started isolating themselves, they have started not, they're not eating well, mm. they are crying a lot, mm. they are all of a sudden so rude, and you know your child is not usually like that. Don't wait until their life is so messed up like mine for you to look for somebody to hold their hand, you know. Yeah. I wish that it's more parents who are coming to me mm -hmm. for their children or seeking help for their children, you see. Yeah. So through that, um, number one, I've been taking my medications even today, I had to take mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, faithfully yeah. because they help me with uh, functioning and to calm the chaos in my head, mm. for me to be collected and to manage to do tasks yeah. to completion, you know. Mm. And number two, I dedicated myself, how do I even say my life, mm -hmm. to helping people. Yeah. who have a condition like mine or other mental health uh, disorders or other mental health issues mm. to help them access the help that they need. Yeah. Mm. Because you know what, Beatrice? Mm -hmm. They may be sitting with it. They know they have a problem, but they don't know who to come to, to tell them. Somebody who will understand them and not judge them. Mm. Because having mental health disorders comes with also a lot of stigma yeah, and a, a lot of things that unless they are said in a safe space, that person will be so afraid, you know? Yeah. Sure. So I dedicated myself mm -hmm. to uh, bring uh, awareness about ADHD and other mental health conditions. Mm -hmm. I also wrote the book and maybe mm -hmm. one of the things uh, I can mention, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that I ensured that I include is what I call a foolproof, <laughs> a foolproof, analysis or a foolproof assessment mm. before you go to Maureen you know in the book you will find a foolproof assessment that that such that by the time you're finishing to assess yourself mm. if you have a ditch it has caught you mm -hmm. for sure wow. <laughs> it has for sure caught you you know yeah. and sometimes it's not you it is your partner your spouse mm. maybe you're wondering why is my wife like this maybe as as my as my husband was wondering before we ever got to know mm. that it is adhd or you're wondering why can't my teenager just why can't she just be up and do her tasks like the rest you mm. know by the time you're finishing to read those uh assessments and they're written in day-to-day -day things right come on your laundry it's not Mm. DSM-5, you know, yeah. uh, DSM-5 is the medical, mm. the medical thing. Before you get to Maureen, just get to know, oh, I'm struggling with my laundry and my, uh, uh, uh. by the end of it, if you have ADHD or your loved one, you will, you'll have known. Such mm. that by the time you're going, you've already started the journey of accepting yourself. Yeah. Mm. And I have found that that has even grounded me more because I have realized, you see, as, as it's written in Ezra, yeah. Ezra, <laughs> he, it's written that he studied the word, mm -hmm. he practiced it, and then he taught it. Mm -hmm. You see, yeah. those three things. I got to know that I have ADHD. Mm -hmm. I sought for help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I am teaching people how to get the help, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And the earlier they get it, the better. The better. So that is how I have, uh, mm -hmm. I, have, I have been doing with the medication and after the diagnosis, yeah. and how I have ensured that the condition is not my limiting factor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because let me say this one last thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm so passionate about it, I can say a lot of I, things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one last thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The sooner that you accept yourself, the easier it is for you to even approach somebody like me who is mm -hmm. calling on you to get access to help. You know, if me, I come to you and tell you, here is the help, and you don't know that you need it, it will not help you. Yeah. Sure. Now, 
Once you get the help, if you have accepted yourself and the sooner you accept yourself, you even respond better to medication. Right. Mm. So the first step and most important step is accepting yourself. Yeah. And number two, once you've accepted yourself, do take the, the responsibility or do pay the price for what it, uh, it takes for it, not, for it to no longer be an inability for it mm -hmm. to be your superpower. Wow, mm. yes. beautiful. And I'm so glad that you also get to share your success story. Yeah. <laughs> we are in the process, we're in the journey, yeah. but then I still see it as a success story since mm. you are yielding. Yeah. There's one counseling, I think you would know this term, it's called hey. Mm -hmm. So there's heal, uh, the other one is evolve and there's yield. Okay. So now I feel like you're in the yielding. You know, you've healed, you're evolving aspect. and you're yielding now with helping other people. Mm. And maybe we can go to Maureen. Let's mm -hmm. address some of the myths and misconceptions. And I think while you're at it, speak to a parent and how they can truly help their child. Because you've mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. some parents are watching and they're like, I mean, I've been thinking punishment is the way out. Okay. So speak to that parent even as you address some of the myths and misconceptions around ADHD. So thank you mm -hmm. for that question and uh, I, I love the fact that Karen is sharing and we can hear it from the person herself. Yeah. So we're not hearing from all, like what she has said, not from DSM-5, uh, we are hearing from the client. Mm -hmm. Though people present differently, let me say that. Quickly before I answer that, there are causes for ADHD that we forgot to mention. Yeah, There yeah. can be uh, hereditary mm -hmm. or not hereditary so you find like what she was saying then the executive functions not forming well mm. this can also be a cause of the adhd mm -hmm. which is non-hereditary so you'll find also how the brain develops yeah. you will find also those challenges can also be there genetic is also the other aspect for causing you find some people when you ask them do you have a history in your family and i think it's a high time we start now doing our genograms mm -hmm. because people have forgotten our grandparents our uncles our family members and now we are in the era where you come to the hospital i ask you do you know your family history so genetic composition is also the other factor. Mm. We also have environmental factors like uh, women who are smoking when expectant mm. or even taking substances or even people who are exposed um, when they are expectant, they're exposed to toxins, mm. like the way those countries where there are those excessive toxins or even when you find the baby is born premature. Yeah. or low birth weight, mm. you might find these conditions. Mm -hmm. I remember the other day, our psychiatrist, Dr. Mashua, who saw Karen, uh, saying that also age, mm. when you are delivering at a very old age, some of these oh. conditions also are okay. appearing in your children due to old age as you head to maybe conceiving your children. Mm. So that said and done about causes, this mother who is back there at home, as you see, one, the myths. Most people think ADHD is only in children. Mm. But as we said, yes, it is diagnosed at childhood. Yeah. But even in adulthood, it can be diagnosed. Maybe it missed from childhood, from being diagnosed at childhood. But not that they developed it yeah. in adulthood. Yeah. It missed. Mm -hmm. So most people think the first myth is that it's a child disorder. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's not a child disorder, but it is identified when one is a child. Right. Okay, right. mostly. Uh -huh. The other myth is that people think when you have ADHD, once you see the therapist, once you see the psychiatrist, it's done. No. <laughs> As she said, when she saw Dr. Mashua, yes. our psychiatrist, consultant, she was put on medication because most of the mental illnesses, we say they are chronic illnesses. Mm -hmm. Chronic means they are manageable, not treatable. It's like diabetes or hypertension. You don't take medication to cure diabetes or hypertension. You take so that you can manage the symptoms. Mm. So the other symptom is that the myth is it is not at a, a short span. Yeah. And it's not a death sentence mm. because it's another myth. People say, now nah, I'm doomed for life. Eh? Mm -hmm. So it is not a death sentence. It is something that can be treated yeah. and can be taken care of. Yeah. Of course, there are so many myths where people think, just because it's ADHD, it should only be hyper. No. Yeah. Remember we said there's the inattentive aspect, mm. which is also part and parcel of the diagnosis, where you can find one with an inattentive aspect, yeah. the subtype, or 
the hyperactivity mm. or even the combined. Okay. Yes. Oh. For the parent at home, yes, I know we are talking about people who are carrying canes, people who want to keep pinching their children because it's a disorder they don't know. Mm -hmm. When you see a psychologist, one of the things we'll do is parental training so that you get first to understand what exactly is this we are talking about and how can I start doing behavioral modification? Mm. I as the parent and even the counselor so that we can help this child who is not able to do this task manage to do this the task or this adult who is not able to complete the assignments to complete the assignment. Mm. So kindly in that aspect of seeing the psychologist, you are able to have the behavior modification, parental training, and yeah. treatment is put on. Mm -hmm. I think when you do that wholesome, we are able to work mm -hmm. best with the child. Amazing. Yes. And I see time is not on our side. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's amazing how time flies. <laughs> yes. But anyway, um, I wouldn't want us to finish off without you mentioning the aware, is it awareness center. Maybe just very briefly, you can just mention it so that people can get help, those who mm. need support. Yes. Mm. Uh, I did mention that... Uh, after, after learning, I accepted myself and now I am training people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is how I got to found the, uh, an ADHD awareness organization right. called NeuroSpicy Kenya, mm -hmm. where we, number one, advocate for early intervention, early, interven uh, early detection and intervention mm -hmm. of ADHD. Right. Uh, we talk to parents and to teachers and to employers to just help them know what this ADHD is and how they can uh, accommodate the people in their lives that yeah. have it. Number two, we have a support group. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is so serious, as I was telling you, Beatrice, behind the scenes, that this week only, in one week, mm -hmm. we've admitted like 15 people to that support group. Mm -hmm. Adults who have ADHD, mm -hmm. that tells you how many more are out there Suffering, their life is getting messed up. They've been they've been called lazy all mm -hmm. their lives, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would invite them to come into the support group and meet people who are just like them, struggling just like them, but making life happen right. in an optimistic way. You see. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can I give them my yes. my contact? Sure. If somebody would want to reach out to me to join the mm -hmm. uh, uh, either to join the neurospacy. Kenya yeah. support group, mm -hmm. you can reach me through 0742 0790 12. I repeat 0742 0790 12. And I, I advocate for more parents yeah. to reach out to, to me through. for their children yeah. who have mental health problems you see yeah. or all they, they are noticing something you know mm -hmm. let us let us first coach them let's let's first talk with them mm -hmm. at yes. a friendly level that's true such that if if the case is now very very serious mm. or has a, a medical underlying thing that's when now we can uh, forward it to yeah. the psychiatrist or the, the psychologist mm -hmm. to see. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, thank okay. you. Yeah, ah, I can't believe time is up. But anyway, um, even as we conclude, I just want to let guys know about this amazing book, The Art of Being Neurospicy. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. understanding adult ADHD from an African ADHD as <laughs> <laughs> perspective. Yes. And I love what you've written down here. I wish someone had told me these things earlier. Kellen Waitera. So if you guys actually need more information, I feel like this book will be the book that just helps them to understand some of these things, yes. Yes. even as we conclude. I mean, I... So maybe before you conclude, yes. it's good to let people, in case you'd want to see the psychiatrist yes. or find us, yes. we're at LifeBridge mm -hmm. uh, Hospital in Mirema, Roisambu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can contact us. We are on Facebook. Mm -hmm. we, are on, we have a website. Mm -hmm. uh, we do videos on our YouTube. You can check out on us. So mm -hmm. kindly check on our LifeBridge page. Yes. Because yes. Yes. there's actually somewhere so that medication sometimes isn't just enough. Yes. Like yes. you need to also you see, also need to see some more help on the counseling side of it. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much, ladies. I mean, this has been wholesome. Thank it's you. It's been beautiful. I've gotten to learn so much, even myself, mm. because I feel now even moving forward, I'll be able to help someone who has it mm. and to even refer them to either of you so that they can get diagnosed and to just really, really work it through. Yes. But I love what Kellen say that you need to accept yourself and see yourself as valuable, even with ADHD. There are so many success stories 
stories. There are so many people who have overcome it in one way or another. There are so mm. many people who are managing it. And I think it has a lot of strengths as well. Some people are where they are successful in what they are doing, not just in spite, but because of ADHD. So I believe now that we have the awareness, I do hope that you as a viewer at home will take the homework to help whoever you feel could actually have some of these symptoms. And for parents, I'm sure they've gotten what they needed to hear today. Yes. <laughs> anyway, time is really far much spent, but I just want to say a very Thank you. A very big thank you to each and every person who has tuned in today. My name is Beatrice Watare and you've been watching Health Check. Have a good night.